This episode is brought to you by Paycor, the HR and payroll software made for leaders. It's never been harder to recruit, hire, and engage workers. That's why HR leaders and frontline managers depend on Paycor for all things people management, from onboarding and performance reviews to compensation and benefits. Learn more at paycor.com slash leaders. This is Optimal Living Daily, episode 2869, 10 Mindful and Powerful Tips to Boost Your Confidence by Rachel Cable of rachelcable.com. And I'm Justin Mollick, the guy who reads articles, book excerpts, and more to you every day, including holidays. It's always with permission from the authors or websites. We couldn't do this without them or without you. So thank you to them and to you for being here. And now let's get right to our post today and start optimizing your life. 10 Mindful and Powerful Tips to Boost Your Confidence by Rachel Cable of rachelcable.com. In episode 55 of the Mindful Kind podcast, I shared my thoughts on how mindfulness can empower us to change our self-talk and grow our self-esteem and confidence. However, I also wanted to share some powerful and mindful tips you can start implementing today to further increase your confidence and help you genuinely believe in yourself. Number one, Be your biggest cheerleader. While it can be tempting to turn to others when your self-confidence needs a boost, instead, give yourself some time to reflect on why you believe you are worthy. Write down as many good things about yourself as you can think of, from thoughtful things you've done for others to aspects you love about your personality. This isn't a time to be shy or inhibited. Declare it widely and believe it just as fiercely. Number two, Reward your self-belief with positive self-talk. Whenever you consciously choose to believe you are enough rather than accepting any thoughts which say you aren't, reward yourself. For example, hey, I just told myself that I'm good enough and I'm doing the best I can. That's awesome. I'm doing a great job. Number three, use your favorite mood boosters. Having a rough day on the tumultuous journey of following your dreams? Well, don't worry, most of us do. Remind yourself that it will pass and give yourself a mood-boosting timeout. Listen to an upbeat song, go to your favorite cafe, play with your children or a pet, attend a rejuvenating yoga class, treat yourself to a pampering session or whatever else makes you feel really, really good. Number four, try a power pose. In a comfortable and quiet place, practice using a power pose. Notice how it makes you feel, perhaps supported, strong, confident, or steadfast. Allow yourself to explore this feeling and embrace it. Our body language can perpetuate how we feel. So make a conscious choice to stand up straighter, roll your shoulders back, lift your chin, and keep your arms open. Number five, practice going outside your comfort zone a little bit at a time. When I was terrified of public speaking, I didn't jump straight into speaking in front of hundreds of people straight away. I slowly built up my confidence in small steps, first by creating a podcast, then by speaking in front of my family, and finally, I spoke at an event. Don't forget to practice self-care after each step outside your comfort zone to encourage feelings of safety and security to help strengthen your confidence for the next step. Number six, use a simple mindfulness technique when you're feeling overwhelmed. Stress, fear, uncertainty, and overwhelm are often confidence crushers. If you notice your confidence is waning in the face of these feelings, practice mindfulness to bring yourself back to a place of calm, focus, and clarity. For example, try a breathing practice. Go for a mindful walk. Tune into your senses. Notice five things you can see, hear, and feel. Have a mindful cup of tea or do a meditation. Number seven, don't be afraid of being confident. It might seem odd, but I used to feel afraid of appearing confident because I confused it with arrogance. However, confidence and arrogance are not the same thing. So here are a few ways I distinguish the two. Confidence encourages other people to feel more confident too. For example, if your boss at work is confident about an upcoming project, his team will likely feel more confident about it too. Arrogance, on the other hand, is often intimidating and drains the confidence of others. If your boss is arrogant about an upcoming project, his team may end up feeling inferior, uncertain, and insecure. Confidence comes across as more genuine, open, and accepting of others, while arrogance 
tends to seem condescending, judgmental, and defensive. Confidence is usually a result of inner acceptance. Confident people are sure of their values and beliefs and are open to feedback and growth. Arrogance is more often displayed as a result of external validation and can easily be threatened. Number eight, keep a confidence token. I've had several different confidence tokens and tools over the years, a new dress to wear to my first speaking event, a water bottle, a quote card, a necklace, which I always wear on meaningful occasions, a perfume. These tools and tokens remind me to take a deep breath, think a positive affirmation, and take a moment to feel grounded and supported. Number nine, be kind. Kindness is my favorite confidence booster. When I make the conscious choice to go out of my way to be kind to someone else, I feel good. When I feel good, I exude confidence. Choose to be kind by sharing a smile, listening to someone with openness, buying a coffee for a friend, leaving a thoughtful comment on social media, or calling a loved one to see how they are. And number 10, believe you are a confident person. You can try your hardest to feel confident and to do things which boost your self-esteem, but at the end of the day, if you're telling yourself that you aren't a confident person, then you won't be able to truly embrace it. I never used to see myself as a confident person. I was quiet, shy, introverted, and deep down, I believe that I wouldn't ever be truly confident. I encourage you to ask yourself, do you think you are a confident person? If the answer is no, then try to consider the following questions. How can I start to see myself as a more confident person? What can I do to strengthen my self-belief? And which thoughts need to change before I can see myself as genuinely confident? Sometimes it's not what we actually do that defines our confidence, it's how we see ourselves. If you can start to see yourself as a more confident person, then the rest will follow. You just listened to the post titled 10 Mindful and Powerful Tips to Boost Your Confidence by Rachel Cable of rachelcable.com. This episode is brought to you by Paycor. Paycor empowers leaders to build winning teams. With Paycor, leaders can recruit, onboard and train employees, set goals and drive performance. If you're a leader, everyone depends on you. Who do leaders depend on? Paycor. Learn more at paycor.com slash leaders. Thank you to Rachel. The power posing one is a really fascinating one to me. It was being debated off and on over the many, many years that studies were going on, but they kept being done. And last I heard, it seems pretty legitimate that doing a power pose like standing straight and putting your hands on your hips or standing straight and putting your fists in the air, something along those lines, can help with confidence and even our psychology, behavior, possibly hormones, it's cool stuff. There was a trick I learned a long time ago, this doesn't really have to do with power posing, but it just reminded me. And it takes remembering to do, but I think it works. And that's to have some sort of gesture that you do whenever something really good happens. So maybe as an example, you put one hand into a fist or put a certain finger in a certain position. It doesn't really matter too much what that gesture is, but you consistently do that pose when good things happen. It can also be used when you catch yourself having negative thoughts, for instance. You can stop yourself while you're having negative thoughts and then sort of reward yourself for doing that and do the gesture. You just did something good. Now, the more you do this, the more that gesture will be associated with goodness and confidence. So then when you're in a situation where you need that boost of positivity or confidence, you can use that gesture to your advantage. It's a cool little trick that can be done with a little bit of practice. But there are lots of options here to try. Let me know what works for you. Have a great rest of your day and I'll see you tomorrow where your optimal life awaits.